This special edition of Let's Edit with Media Composer is brought to you by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I'm very excited to start talking about a new member of the Boris FX family and that is Generate Sapphire. In some upcoming lessons we're going to start getting in and working with Sapphire and I thought there's no better way to start than with one of the most powerful tools inside of Sapphire and that is the S effect or the builder tool. And in this lesson, we're gonna get up and running with the builder tool. As you can see, this animation that you see on the screen right now is something that I put together fairly quickly inside of builder. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in part two of the lesson. In this lesson, I wanna get you up and running, show you how to apply effects inside of builder, how you can get in and apply presets, and then how you can work with some very powerful builder presets that have been supplied for you and you can be up and running with this new tool in no time flat. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And we're just gonna start out with a basic shot here to get us up and running with the S effect or the builder effect. What I'm gonna do is press Command and eight on the Mac control and eight on Windows. Now to find S effect, what you're gonna do is navigate inside of the effects palette down to the Sapphire category to the builder section. And inside of builder, you're gonna notice that you have two effects. You have S effect and S transition. This lets you build effects and build transitions, which is very cool. I'm gonna take the S effect and drag it and drop it down onto my shot. Now, once it's applied, nothing is going to happen to your shot. And this is totally expected because we haven't gotten in and started to build an effect yet. So let's step into effects mode, shift and Y is my shortcut on the keyboard. Now, if I had applied this to a title, much like when working with BCC's effects, we have the ability inside of Sapphire effects to apply these effects to a title or to a key. Now there's a whole bunch of other parameters in here like the ability to add masks and backgrounds and things like that, but we're not gonna worry about those right now. I'm gonna deal with those in upcoming lessons where we talk about Builder, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about it when we actually get into the Builder interface. So to launch the Builder interface, what we'd like to do is to get in and edit the effect. Now, like I said before, Right now, nothing has been applied. You'll see that we have three basic main parameters here. We have our mask, our source, and our background representing, let me just slide Builder out of the way here. There is our mask layer, which right now is set to none, so this parameter is not going to apply to anything. Background as well, which is set to none, and the source, which is representing the clip in our timeline. Now, the way that node-based compositing works is you start out with a shot, which is what we've applied the effect to, and at the end of all of the work we're going to do is the end result. And what we're going to be doing is applying nodes in between our source and our result to get our look. Let me show you what I mean. Now what's important to keep in mind is that once we get into Builder, you need to take the S underscore out of your brain. Because I know when you start looking for effects, you're going to type in S underscore blur or S underscore, you know, warp or something like that. Inside of Builder, we don't need to do that. What we're going to do is just go by the effects name. So I'm going to come down to just a standard blur effect. Now a couple ways that we can apply this to our shot. We can drag it and drop it right into the workspace and then we can take the node that's coming off of the source and going to the result and we're going to take that and we're going to add it to the source input on the blur. We can then take the blur's output and drag that right down to the end result and we now have the blur effect. Now I did this the long way. The ideal way of doing this is just to simply delete that effect and to take blur and just drag it and place it in between the source and the result and it's now been applied. Now you'll notice that as soon as I do that, right over here on the right, we now have all of the parameters for blur. Now, let's say hypothetically I had a lot of blurs in here and I wanted to get in and be specific about what this blur was. I can actually refer to this as the main blur. Now you're gonna see where this comes into play in just a second. Now we can get in and set things like the blur amount or the brightness and things like that. And once we're done and we're ready to take this and apply it to a shot in the timeline, 
we can simply say OK, and it will be applied immediately. Now you're also going to notice that we now have all of the parameters available to us inside of the S effect effect, so we can get in and adjust that. Well, this is where things start to get very cool with S effect and Builder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into the edit effect parameter, and I'm going to tell this effect that I don't want to see all of the parameters for blur. Maybe I've created a very complex effect that I don't want the editor to get in and start mucking around with the way that it looks. I only want to give the editor access to certain parameters. What I can do is I'm just going to turn all of the parameters off and then just come in and decide, well, maybe I just want the editor to have access to the blur amount. So I'm going to select blur amount and I'm going to say OK. And guess what? Now the editor only has access to the blur amount inside of the effects editor. Very, very cool. Okay, now that's the basics on how to apply an effect. Now what's also important to keep in mind, and I'm just going to come back into the edit effect window, into our builder window. I'm just going to delete the blur here for a second, because in many cases where we start working with effects is presets. And we have the ability to get in and add presets in a couple of ways inside of Builder. What I'm going to do is right from inside of the Builder interface, the Effect Builder interface, I'm going to apply a preset to this footage. What we're going to do is navigate up to the Node dropdown. I'm going to come down to Insert Node from Preset. What we now have the ability to do is to get in and access from the hundreds of presets that are available to us inside of Sapphire. Now again, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to come back to, let's come to the Edge Colorize effect. I always like this one. I always think it's very cool. Edge Colorize. Make sure I spell that correctly here. Okay, there it is right there. I'm going to double click and we now have access to all of the different looks. And this is just one that I wanted to pick because I thought it looked really cool. And what's going to happen is once I say load, that preset, not only the preset, but the effect and the preset are going to be applied in between the source and result to give me access to that preset right away. And again, much like we've done before, I can get in and turn on and off any parameters that I want to get in and have access to inside of Media Composer. So let's just have access to the Rotate Colors parameter so that when I say OK and we come back here, we can now rotate those colors and of course get in and keyframe them however we want. Okay, now I've talked about getting in and adding presets, but what's very cool as well about Sapphire version 10 is that we now have what are referred to as builder presets inside of version 10. Now, how do these work? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to head back into the effect here. I'm just going to delete this node. I'm just going to say OK. And what we're going to do is instead of going into the builder to get in and apply these presets, I'm going to navigate right here to load preset. Now, what we have the ability to do is to add presets right from here. So if I came back in here and we just typed in edge colorize again, we could get in and access those presets right from here if we wanted to. But what we also have the ability to do from here is to apply builder effects or builder presets. Now, what are these? These are looks that have been created for very specific purposes. So for example, let's say we wanted to have an eight millimeter film look. I could simply select it. What I'm going to do is navigate up here, hit the preview button, and there's what our eight millimeter film look is going to look like. Now what I'm going to do is simply say load to apply that to my shot. And in a couple of seconds, there we go. Now, of course, that does beg the question, what's going on under the hood of S Effect and Builder? Well, let me navigate up here to edit the 8mm preset that we have applied. And once we get in here, you'll see that this is actually made up of a whole ton of different effects and different presets that have been combined to create the 8mm look. But the best part was I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was simply go in choose the look that I wanted and apply it, and we are ready to go in no time flat. Now, I want to point out something else that's very cool inside of the workspace, and that is this little sticky note right here. You'll see that we're being told by whoever created this look that we can swap out the film look node for a bleach bypass look node for other variations if we want to. Now, how do you get in once you start working and apply these little sticky notes for editors to see? Well, much like before, I'm just going to navigate up to the node dropdown and I'm just going to add a sticky note. I'm just going to write, hey, it's Kevin here. OK, and I'm just going to take that sticky note and drag it over here. So this way, when I say OK and we head back into Media Composer, if at any point an editor comes back in to this effect, you'll see right away that there's the hey, it's Kevin note right there. 
So this note can actually follow along with whoever's using this effect. So you can leave detailed notes as to exactly how editors or graphic designers can get in and modify these looks if they want to. All right, I think that's a great introduction to the S effect or the builder tool inside of Generate Sapphire. Now, in the next lesson, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I built that inner limits sort of look, that you know bad 60s TV look. And basically, it's fairly straightforward to create. Once you see how simple it is to create something like that, you're gonna be able to get in and create even more complex animations in no time flat. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC 10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.